Your very survival is dependent on a highly complex network of other species on Earth. You can breathe because plants, animals and bacteria regulate the atmosphere. You eat crops that depend on a climate and a water cycle that is regulated by forests. Humans depend on healthy ecosystems. Yet it's humans that have put all of this at risk. Pollution, climate change and the exploitation of habitats and loss of biodiversity are playing havoc with ecosystems. Ecologists have been warning of a sixth mass extinction and there's academic debate over whether that's already happening. What's very clear is the rate of extinctions is alarming. Of the estimated 8 million animal and plant species on Earth, 1 million are at risk of extinction. Three quarters of land and two thirds of marine environments have been significantly altered by human actions. The populations of mammals, birds, amphibians, reptiles and fish shrank by 68% on average between 1970 and 2016. In short, animals are becoming extinct at the fastest rate in all of human history. It's alarming because human societies basically depend on there being a, a diversity of organisms and ecosystems out there. So the biodiversity crisis presents a threat to human societies. Humanity relies on a narrow range of species for food and resources. But those species are themselves part of a complex ecological web that can't be sustained without a much greater diversity of animals, plants and bacteria. Take tuna. We fish tuna, we eat tuna. But the tuna doesn't exist on its own. It's at the top of a huge food chain. Microscopic marine algae called phytoplankton are eaten by micronectin, like shrimp, which are eaten by smaller fish, which in turn are eaten by tuna. And that's just one chain of a much wider ecosystem. You need all of the stuff that the tuna eats throughout its life in order to get the tuna that you net at the end and that you serve on a dish. The biodiversity crisis may pose as great a risk to humans as climate change, but it gets far less attention. In many ways, those two crises are interlinked. The largest sink for carbon emissions is plants soaking CO2 out of the atmosphere, turning it into plant material through photosynthesis. As we lose plants, we contribute to the climate problem. You can't solve the climate problem unless you solve the biodiversity crisis. But there is a glimmer of hope. An explosion of new technology in the past 10 years, from motion-activated camera traps to microphone monitors and radio tags, which is helping ecologists to track, measure and protect life on Earth. The Global Airborne Observatory is a lab in the sky. It flies over coral reefs, savannas and rainforests, gathering data about these vital ecosystems. I feel like There's equation 11 could be combined with equation uh, 10 in the future. It's the brainchild of Dr. Greg Asner, a renowned ecologist. Our airborne program and our satellite program have been deployed to understand how our rainforests are changing, how temperate forests are changing, African savannas, and even tropical coral reefs. Our technology allows us to put together a picture of the biodiversity of a region, how much carbon is stored in that region, and the health of the ecosystem overall. It looks like some relatively younger corals down in here. So the data collected can then be used to create 3D models of entire landscapes. Our technologies have advanced over the last 20 plus years to include lasers that fire out of the bottom of the airplane. And those laser beams image the land surface. That gives us a 3D view of what we have. And we fuse that with another technology called an imaging spectrometer. That technology tells us the chemical composition of the environment. We're going to come up on another dark patch here, right here. Initially, the team's work concentrated just on forests, but the radical changes in coral reefs due to climate change and coastal development prompted them to diversify their research. I'm really interested in this one because it's such a large colony. I wonder how old it is. Work has really been focused on understanding what is happening to our reefs. You, you know, it's a much harder uh, problem because literally it's covered by seawater. The story out there is that all coral reefs are dying. 
They're all in trouble, but they're not all dying. There's a wide range of outcomes right now from good to bad to pretty ugly conditions. Our technology is letting us work with governments, work with conservation, work with managers to understand in more detail what they've got. It's really the kind of detailed information that puts biodiversity into the discussion, into and onto the table among decision makers. From up in the air to down on the ground, there's a huge and highly sophisticated patchwork of technology that is monitoring biodiversity all around the world. And as the tech gets smarter, smaller and cheaper, it presents even greater opportunities. One of the first rules of making a sensor to put in the field is it has to be small and cryptic and easy to hide. This tiny device is helping to protect endangered species. I'm holding in my hand one of our TrailGuard AI cameras and you can see right away how small it is. It's basically a little bit longer than my index finger. It's been designed by Eric Dinnerstein, a leading expert in biodiversity technology. But unlike most conservation cameras, TrailGuard doesn't only track wildlife, but poachers too. Essentially, TrailGuard is an AI-infused camera-based alert system that functions like a burglar alarm for national parks. It allows 150 rangers to be as effective as 1,500 rangers. Poaching is responsible for the destruction of a number of animal populations in Africa. It's still the largest direct threat to many of the world's most endangered species. In the first trial of Trail Guard in Africa, we were able to detect 30 poachers representing 20 different poaching gangs. The protection forces on the ground were able to make a significant number of arrests. Trail Guard's strength is down to machine learning technology. The AI scans through the camera's images for poachers and issues an alert if one is detected. Here's a picture of me. You can see the bounding box around it determines that I'm indeed a human being. If it was a picture of my dog, it would say, that's not a human, I'm going to filter out that image and not send it. For conservationists, AI has revolutionized the time-consuming task of scanning through images, sound recordings, and other data samples. One of the most pressing conservation problems we have in the world today is how do we monitor endangered species? They're very hard for biologists to study. We can now use computer vision to monitor the movements and behavior of these endangered species like tigers and rhinos and elephants. But even if every living creature on the planet could be logged, the data would be useless without understanding how every species relates to everything else. One solution could be to develop better biodiversity models. Much like climate models, they would forecast the impact of changes to ecosystems. But addressing the loss of diversity will require funding and the support of governments. All the sensors in the world are not going to save a species from going extinct. You're going to need policies and you're going to need humans on the ground to affect those policies. Yet policymakers' response to the biodiversity crisis has been slow. In 2010, a list of 20 conservation targets, known as the Aichi targets, was drawn up. The Aichi targets are incredibly complex, incredibly detailed in what they're trying to achieve, but also horrifically vague in how they are to be met and what a measurement of success is for most of them. The result of all of this is that by the time the reckoning day came in 2020, none of the targets were fully met. Right now, humanity is on a trajectory that's heading off a cliff. All of the technology in the world cannot compensate if we don't have the political will to use that information and protect life on Earth. I'm Katrine Brahick, Environment Editor for The Economist. To read our report on conservation technology, please click the link. And thank you for watching.